Okay. So, we will continue our discussion in our last lecture we talked about that the an unknown cell which will act on the naive T helper cell that naive T helper cell would be converted as a result of I L 4 into a T helper 2 cell. The T helper 2 cell then will secrete I L 4 and I L 5. These guys in the T helper 2 would then be working with B cells. So, I am just going to make a B cell here. So, this guy is going to be secreting I L 4 and 5 which are going to act on the B cell and this guy is going to be working with the B cell. So, I make the B cell in this way, this is just a big B here, but this is sort of a weapon factory of our body which forms the weapons, which makes the weapons and then shoots them. So, this is like a mobile weapon factory. So, that is why this guy is sitting on this little um, uh, carrier. So, anyways the T helper 2, T helper 2 acts on the B cell, it releases interleukin 4 and 5 plus it has multiple ways of connecting with the B cell. So, we will discuss those in detail as well. The end result is this B cell becomes in the beginning it is a B cell like this as a result of interleukin 4 and activation it would become an active B cell which is called a plasma cell. It, it would develop a big tummy here in which it would have a lot of antibodies developed. Antibodies are proteins which are produced by the B cell. And that is why you should remember this, not all proteins are manufactured by liver. Think about it, cells make their own proteins too, do not don't we? The nucleated cells have RNA and that RNA goes out in the cell and we make proteins. So, cell make their own proteins. This is a cell which is making a protein which is going to go out in the blood. These are immunoglobulins. So, these are proteins which are out in the blood, but are not produced by the liver. So, anyways. B cell would become activated and as a result they would start. So, if I create this, so they would start shooting these weird weapons. So, this is a Y shaped weapon and this weapon is the immunoglobulin. So, these immunoglobulins are then going to go and act on the pathogen which are sitting outside and having fun. So, some of them are running around in the street, they are looking for a hiding place to hide. So, these weapons or these firing firepower has come to start attaching to them. So, this is the basic bigger picture. We have two, two arms of the immune system. We have innate arm, we have acquired arm. Innate arm has if mechanical barrier available through which the pathogen has to move. If the pathogen moves successfully, then within the innate arm under the mechanical barriers are the cells which are going to pick up that pathogen, digest it and show the pieces of it on their MSC2 complexes. We have not talked about what will happen with these complexes. We talked about this in this lecture and previous that IL-12 will be released. IL-12 would cause the naive T cell which is part of acquired arm, it would activate the naive T cell which would become a helper T cell, helper T cell 1. The helper T cell 1 would then secrete interleukin 2 which would cause cytotoxic T cells to become active. So, cytotoxic T cells are really bad. These guys are going to pick up cells which have gotten pathogens hiding in them and then kill them. On the other hand, there is an unknown cell in the immune system, it is not known which cell, which can produce I L 4. But once the I L 4 is produced, that would act on the na naive T cell and convert it into helper T cell 2. The helper T cell then would release 4 and 5, which would act on the B cell and activate them. B cell in turn would release immunoglobulins or antibodies. 
So this is a basic function. We would talk more about various interleukins and various chemical formulas and chemi chemical substances which are working. But for, for now, we'll stop here. In next lectures, we'll pick up the next topics. Thank you.